Hi everyone, my name is Mickey Hudson and I'm going to be hosting today's uh, My Sonet uh, Facebook YouTube Live. So come on in, have a seat. Uh, we're just going to jump right in. Um, today we're going to be working with Word Sculpt Wizard and this is going to be found in both the gold level and the platinum level. Now, the gold level is now available for subscription as well as with a perpetual box version um, rather than just the box version. So if you are curious about software, I would highly recommend to talk with your local dealer. There are better deals to be had with your dealer, so give them a, a call. Uh, there are some features on the, MySo, uh, the MySoNet uh, Word Sculpt that are available in Platinum that are not available in uh, the gold, uh, but we'll talk about that as we go along. Uh, but the word sculpt itself is available in both. Now for my gurus that are gonna be watching who are software savvy, some of you may watch this and go, why is she doing it this way? I would just do it that way. The wonderful thing about all of the software is there's lots of different ways to do a lots of different things. And this is something that I kind of uh, created as a hack. And uh, so when I was talking about it with the other educators and um, some of the other people in the company, they were like, that's a good hack. You should do that. So that this is going to be a MySonet hack. Um, some of you will opt to do this in digitizing, and that is absolutely fine as well. All right, so let's just jump right in. I'm going to switch over to my computer. As usual, I will be working in Windows and referencing uh, Mac for those of you that are working with Mac. Uh, before I go to my computer, for those of you that may not be aware of what the Word Sculpt is, Word Sculpt is a wizard or an application in Mac that will allow you to bring in shapes and you can load them up with different words using different fonts and you can actually sculpt them to create um, all kinds of different interesting things. You really see this feature being used around the holidays and you'll see tea towels and uh, napkins and all kinds of stuff for sale with these holiday shapes and loving words. And this is how it's done. It's with, it's with this little wizard. It's really, really simple. But what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be using it in a non-traditional way. So we're not going to be using the words inside. We are going to use it to do quilting. Now there's gonna be a couple of different ways I'm gonna be showing you how to, to I use this little hack. And one of the ways is to create quilted backgrounds. Um, another way is to create uh, a, a way to use the quilt block wizard with your MySonet library designs. And I will talk about that. And then the third way is I, I use the quilt block wizard when I want to create applique, but I want it to be three different colors. For those of you that with digitizing, you know that you can create applique in digitizing. And for those of you that are not familiar with machine embroidered applique, is it, it stitches three times. It does a running stitch so you know where to place the fabric. It does a a reinforced stitch so that you can stop and cut the fabric and then it'll do the decorative stitch on top. But when you go through digitizing, that is all one color, which is great. However, there are times when I'm doing something and I want all of the placement lines to stitch out and then all of the uh, cut lines to stitch out and then all of the decorative lines. So by using this little hack, um, I can create those really, really easy uh, and then color sort. So it'll do all of the placement lines at once, all of the cut lines at once, and then all of the uh, decorative at once. So feel free as always to ask questions. So once again, this is my net, primarily with gold and platinum level. So here we go. So one of the things that happens 
when, if you're unfamiliar with using the library, whoops, hello. The MySonet library is when you download a design from the library, what can happen is, let me just send this over. So if you are unfamiliar with the MySonet sending feature, this is something that can be done with the MySonet Wi-Fi capable machines. So I'm signed into the website and I'm signed into my computer with the MySonet software. And then if I'm signed in with my sewing embroidery machine, um, I can just send things back and forth all over the place. If you do not have a MySonet Wi-Fi capable machine, you still have access to the library, just like any other design uh, website that's out there. You could All of these designs are for purchase as well. And you can now get the library all by itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open this up. So all I did was I brought in a design from the MySonet library. And I'll know it's the library design because it gives me this little icon right here on my film strip. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut this. And I'm going to go over to my Create tab. And I'm going to go to Quilt Block Wizard. Yes, I know we're playing with word sculpt. But this is where the problem started, was when I was playing with and I wanted to quilt around. And I wanted to quilt around a my so, uh, library design. So I want 5060. And I'll click next. And if I paste my library design, and this one's going to do it. No, nope, it's not going to do it. So if I paste my library design, do you see what is happening here? I'm getting this box around the library design itself. I don't want a box around the library design. I want to be able to use the quilt block all the way up to the design. So here's the same thing. If I bring in a library design, it's just going to give me a box. So that was not what I wanted. And so I had to sit and figure out a way to, how do I get this to be able to be an outline that I can use in Quilt Block Wizard? And I played with digitizing and I played with this and I played with that. And I started goofing around in word sculpt. And this is where I came up with this little hat. Now, this is the what, one of the features where you have to have the platinum um, because we need draw in paint. If you don't have the platinum, you will just go straight to draw in paint um, and not so much. I don't. Amy, can you check? I, I can't remember if uh, the gold has draw in paint um, off the top of my head now that I'm talking about it. Um, so if you could check that real quick. But in the platinum level of word sculpt, I have all of the shapes already built in. There's tons and tons of shapes built in. But I also have the ability to edit the shapes that are already built in, or I can create a new shape. And so that is what I did. Now, the very first thing that I'm going to want to do is I need this image. So on the Mac, I'll show the Mac first because it's extremely easy. Um, let me go to oops, and I just need to go to my favorite. And let me just send this over to All right, and I'm going to change the name. 
So one of the things that I want to do is I want to get rid of, I just want uh, an image of the design. Now with the Mac, this is extremely easy. You're going to hit touch, hold your keys, shift, command, and the number four. And you see how my cursor changed? And I can just click and drag and it will automatically create an image for me. And it's going to end up dropping right on my desktop. Now with the windows, it's going to be done a little differently. We're going to need this little app here. And I understand that the snipping tool is available as part of your windows. So if you do a search for the snipping tool, and then I just saved it to my I just saved it to my taskbar. So if you right click on anything, you can pin it right to your taskbar. So I'm not gonna go ahead and do it because I've already clipped it, but I will show you if you hit the snipping tool, you'll click on new. And then once I have this little cursor, I will just click and drag. And then it's going to need to be saved. So you will save it. Um, and just remember where you saved it to. All right. But that's how you can do that. So I just have an update. Thank you, Amy. Draw and paint, paint is only in the platinum. So for those of you that have the gold level, just hang tight because we will get to you in just a moment. Um, but this is for the platinum. So what I did do now is I have my little clip art here. I want to know the size. So the size is 142 by 214. So I'm going to come over here to Word Sculpt. And I'm going to create a new shape. This is going to open up Draw and Paint. Just give it a minute. All right. Now I'm going to come over to insert. Now here are the tabs for the Windows version. When you go to um, the Mac side, the tabs look a little different. So let me just open that. Up. The tabs look a little different. So this is, would be your insert is this little plus sign. But these, when I refer to tabs, it's going to be these here. And it's the same on the regular software. The tabs are all here. We just, we just don't have it all spelled out. We have it nice and clean. So what I'm going to do here is another tip when it comes to working with Windows versus Mac. Windows works across, across the top. Here. So with the windows, I'm working across the top. And when I'm working with Mac, all of those commands are down the side. So as I'm working across, just keep in mind that the Mac people will be going down the side. But I'm going to come on over and choose insert file. And I'm just going to go to my desktop. And I'm going to select that little screenshot and bring it in. So now I have my, my image in the window, in my draw and paint. Is everybody with me? Do I have any questions so far? So what we've done was we opened up our software, we went to the word sculpt, and we created a new shape. Now from here, I'm going to come over to draw. And I am going to zoom in just a bit because I want it to be easier to see. All right. So when I go to draw, I can come over here and I personally choose the point draw. You can choose freehand draw. Um, you can do all that other stuff if you like using your Bezier tools. 
but I am a very simple person. I can't draw a happy face. So I keep it really simple with the, the point draw. Now, if I want to make a sharp corner, I'm going to hold my shift and it will create a little square. But the rest, I'm just going to quickly come around. Now, I am not creating an embroidery file. I'm just creating an outline. So I don't worry too much about being exact. I want to be close. I can clean it up in a minute. So right now I'm just fussing around, getting around it. So I'm not getting in all the nooks and crannies. I just want to be around the design. I'm going to actually not go into that little nook and cranny. I'm just going to come around. But again, I will do clean up later. So I just want to get around the outside. And how detailed you want to get is fine. But I am doing this for Facebook Live time, which means I'm on a time limit. So I'm not going to go into all the little nooks and crannies. So does everybody kind of get the idea of what's happening? If you do not, please let me know. And then I will just click the, the same node that I started on and it will create the outline for me. So what I did here was this had a fill on and I wanted to be able to see my design. So over here I have the line and I have the fill. I just came over and hit or clicked on the X to remove the fill color. So now I can come down and edit my point. So here, here is my draw and here are my points so I can edit. So if I click on points, this is where I can come and clean up and fine tune and do all that stuff. So like this little point here is making me crazy. So I am going to change it to a smooth. Oops. And I'm going to just clean this up a bit so that it's not so pointy and I can zoom in and really clean up if I wanted to right and really really clean and get really really finicky so everybody kind of with me here Thumbs up, sad face, happy face, comments, questions, good. All right. All right, so I'm not going to be as fussy as I would be if I were making it for real um, due to time. Because I want, I have lots of stuff I want to show you. But once I have this done, I will go ahead and right click and finish edit points and it will go back to creating that shape again. Now, what happens again with the MySoNet embroidery system is that everything is integrated. So what I'm working on here is actually happening behind me on the Word Sculpt Wizard. So it's very cool. So I could save this if I wanted to come up here and save this, or I can just X out of it. And it's going to show up in my Word Sculpt Wizard. Now, in Word Sculpt, once I've got my shape, whether I've pulled a shape from the, the built in collection or created something, I can come down here to the stitch type. 
And as you can see right now, it is a satin stitch. I'm going to go ahead and change it to a triple stitch because I'm just using this as a placement hook line. I'm going to change the size here to 142. Point four and 214.8. I want to get as close to the actual size of the image itself. Now, once I'm done and I'm good there, I will go ahead and, and click on next. And what it will normally do is I was playing with it today, so I've already deleted, but it will come up with. Um, letters are words so this is how you would type in your words if you were going to work with um the traditional way so we could play with this this way i there's a whole video on word sculpt so i'm not going to play a whole lot with this but what i want is i just want the outline so I can delete all of the words and end up with just the shape. And if I go ahead and click finish, there is my outline for my shape. Now, as you can see, if I would have been a little more painstaking, I could have gotten right on the design, right? But this is just to demo. So now what I can do is I can come in, I can cut this. I'm going to click on the home tab and I'm going to cut this and I'm going to go to create. And now if I go to quilt block wizard and paste this, this will allow me to get right up and close and personal to my shape. So the margin, I can change the margin to nothing. I can change the margin to a little bit so we can see a little bit around the outside, which is exactly what I did there. And then if I click next, you can see now that the, the quilt block wizard is going to go all the way up snug to my unicorn. Now on my little sample that I have, I chose a motif. And one of the really cool things about the motifs is any of the things in Quilt Block Wizard, we can come over, and as soon as I select it, the options icon will uh, light up. And once that happens, I have access to all these options. I have the ability to create my own motifs. I have Universal. I have Husqvarna Viking. And I have Faf. So I'm going to just pull the same a stitch that I chose for my little sample, which is in the Omnimotion stitches. And there it is. And then I tell it OK. And it gives me the motif. But I'm going, OK, I want to change that a little bit. I'm just going to change my motif. to 45 degree. Okay. So I played a little bit with the spacing and all of that good stuff um, on my sample. I'm going to change my group width here to 16. Okay. But now you can see that I have the outline. But one other thing that I'm going to talk about here is if you see here, this is orange. This is a group. Orange means it's grouped. So what it did was it grouped the quilting and the outline. I do not need the outline. So if I come down here and reveal groups, so I've, down here is at the bottom of the film strip. I can come and right click on or delete. I can go home and delete. But I'm just going to delete the outside, the outline that I created in WordSculpt. So now I have my 
background and my quilt, uh, my ribbon design. But I want to change the order. This is where the film strip comes in. Amazing. I'm just going to move that right up there and just change that order. So now it will stitch the quilting first, and then I can do the ribbon embroidery. So I'm going to come back over here and show you this guy here. So that is exactly what I did here. So I created the outline. I gave myself a, a larger margin and I used that particular stitch. But if you find that you're having trouble with the library designs as part of the subscription, creating a box, um, this is what is going on. Okay. And it, you can easily fix it. So what do you guys think of that? Any questions? No? All right. And this is exactly what I did here with the other um, ribbon embroidery design. So this, I use this any I, anytime I have a library design, I just use uh, word sculpt to create a uh, just a quick shape it doesn't have to be uh detailed it doesn't have to be artistic it just creates a shape around it okay so that is one way that i quilt with word sculpt uh wizard um another way that i quilt with word sculpt wizard is on this same sample so let me pull it up a little bit more so here i have these little hearts so I created a quilted background for my heart. And here I have a, don't mind my messy desk. Um, I have a working sewing room. So uh, I did the castle from the Mycelonet Library and I created a castle quilting uh, background. So this is the one that everybody can do. So what I showed you, I just showed you is only with the, the platinum subscription, but this will work with the gold or the platinum. So I'm going to go ahead and delete these. All right. I'm going to go ahead and close that secondary window. All right. So one of the things when we go to the create tab and we click on word sculpt, now with gold and silver or gold and platinum, we will have this pull down menu of all of these shapes that are available so there's animals there's uh buildings there's just all kinds of fun stuff there's letters shapes etc so what i did was i came down and i chose this little castle and i wanted it to be fairly small because my block was fairly small so i came in and said i want this to be about 75 millimeters now, one thing that is really cool, enter, one thing that is, did I say 75 inches, 75 millimeters, is very cool, is let's say I don't work in millimeters. Well, if you just hover here, it will tell you in how many inches this is as well. Okay. All right, so this is little under three inches. However, if you think in inches, I can say, I want this to be three inches, and I hit the inch mark, it'll automatically convert it for me as well. So you can keep it in millimeters. It's very easy to work in inches either way. I just type in, um, I just type in the, the number either in millimeters or in inches, and it'll automatically convert it. So a question came up, how do you join the quilt blocks? Do you embroider with batting and backing? So that's a very good question. There are times where um, I do kind of whole cloth. Uh, there are times where I do quilt as you go, where I join the pieces beforehand. And then I quilt once it's all pieced together. And then what I did here was a kind of um, quilt as you go. So, okay, just move my threads right under my quilt. Okay. 
All right, let me get over to the right camera. So here I embroidered the squares first, and then I had sashing, so I quilted them as you go. If you notice here, I just went ahead and added uh, batting and fabric because I didn't. I was showing this off and not really doing quilting there. So this is one way to quilt as you go, and this is a particularly wide sashing. This is another way to do quilt as you go, and this will be an event eventually. Let me get rid of this guy. These guys are just scrutinizing, scrutinizing my handiwork. So this is another way. So it's very similar, but instead of having the really wide sashing, um, I have more of a, a more narrow. And then I just use my binding attachment on, on both of these. But this is all kind of embroidered and quilt as you go. Um, but normally when I want to do uh, quilt as you go, where I'm, I'm kind of, I don't want the sashing kind of like what you see here. Um, I believe Karen has a, Karen Charles has a Facebook live on her quilting technique um, where she pieces the fabric and then uses the, um, like the edge joining or the narrow joining or the stitch in the ditch with the zigzag and joins her batting. And so I do that as well, where I would quilt this and add my pieces and then quilt this or embroider this and then add my next piece and embroider. So there's no sashing in between. Does that make any sense? I was not prepared for that question. So um, I don't have a very good sample for what I'm trying to say. But I know Karen Charles has some quilt as you go um, stuff. I hope to have some more quilt as you go. I love quilt as you go. Um, and there's many ways to do it. Um, with sashing, without sashing, you can make it look like a whole cloth quilt. You can make it look like you've done the whole thing as a quilt top, batting, and backing, but it's all quilted as you go. So there's lots of different ways to do quilt as you go, um, but that is what I tend to do, is kind of the quilt as you go. Um, any other questions? All right, let's get back to the screen. All right, so So back when I'm doing this little guy here, all right, uh, this is how I did this. And there's lots of ways that you can do this. But I made him to be about three inches tall. And I could probably make him, let me make him, let me make him two inches tall. So two inch. And then I can go ahead and before I click next, this is going to be a quilting design. So I want it to be just a running stitch. So once again, under here, my stitch type, I have all these stitch types. So I'm just gonna select a running stitch. I can change my options and I can change my stitch length. I can do all kinds of fun stuff in here. I'm gonna leave it at two. And if I click next, and again, I don't want any words. So I'm gonna leave that alone and I'm gonna click finish. So now I have this running stitch shape and with this, I will play with my Encore as well. So if I come over here to Encore and I'm going to choose a straight line and let's just do four repeats. Nope, four. And then if I apply it, oh, I need to tell it. There we go. And then I can preview. And I go, oh, well, I really want more than that. I can go ahead and let's go just bump it up back to six and preview. And let me just go ahead and do seven. The reason I'm going up is I want to be able to, or eight, I want to be able to overlap them a bit to create kind of a shape. And as long as I don't hit apply, I can do that. All right, so I'll go ahead and hit apply. 
And now I can actually go, I'm going to go home and I'm going to rotate this 45 degrees. Actually, I should have done that beforehand. I usually work with a square hoop too when I do this kind of stuff. But I'm going to go back to Encore and I want to. and do the same thing here. And I can come and scooch this in. And I could offshoot it if I wanted to and create it too. So I can be happy with that or I can say, nope, I don't wanna do that. I'm going to go ahead and combine this and I'm gonna create, or I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate it and create a little offshoot. And now if I select all and I can combine them, and then if I go to Encore, but do you see how all of a sudden just by playing, we end up with all these, these different abilities to play. So I'm gonna change this to four. And I'll apply this. And I'm going to go ahead and just flip this around, rotate, 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 rotate. But to see how I've created now a new embroidered quilted background. And the fun thing is you can mix and match. Uh, you can do all kinds of fun, different things with this. Do I have any questions about this? Any ooh ah wows? Anybody who's been in any of my classes know I like my ooh ah wows. All right. So one thing too that I want to talk about for those of you that have um, embroidery machines with active stitch technology or deluxe stitch system. Thank you. Thank you for the wow. Um, so if you have active stitch technology or deluxe stitch system on your embroidery machine, when I do quilting with just a running stitch like that, um, I turn off the active stitch or the deluxe stitch system and turn it back to a regular tension. And I'll turn my tension up because when we do embroidery, we want the embroidery to pull nicely to the back because we want all the pretty on top. However, when I'm quilting, and when most of us are quilting, we want it to look like we painstakingly sat there and sewed it on the sewing side. So that is why we'll turn off the active stitch or deluxe stitch system, turn our tension back up to a more normal tension, and it will look like it was sewn instead of embroidered. So it is a great little tip for those of us that like to quilt with our embroidery. Um, if you've ever wondered why the quilting looks funny on the back, that is why. All right, so that's a tip to write down. All right, so we've played with the Quilt Block Wizard to create a new quilting background. We've quite played with Quilt Block, or excuse me, not Quilt Block Wizard, we're on Word Sculpt. We played with Word Sculpt Wizard to create a quilting background. We've used Word Sculpt Wizard to uh, address the uh, import on the library designs for the uh, encrypted designs. And now I'm going to show you how I use it for applique. Now, if any of you guys have questions, please, please, please ask questions. Because either it makes me nervous, either I am teaching this so well, which I know would be a miracle or you guys have questions that you're not answer asking and just keep in mind that if you have a question somebody else does too um so just speak up because somebody else will want to hear it as well all right so last but not least so i'm going to give you an image of my my wonderful quilt here again while i grab the little mask that i forgot to pull up all right oh no this isn't the right one You'll get the idea. All right, so I'm back. So.
So this is a, a way that I tend to use uh, Quilt Pockets as another word sculpt as a hack. Was back when uh, COVID and we were wearing masks. Was just the way I did the unicorn. I created this shape in word sculpt. So and I just had it like a basic running stitch. So then I was able to bring this shape in to my software and just put all these little designs. I could do all these fun little things um, and then almost treat it like a um, in the hoop project. So I would lay my fabric, stitch all this little stuff, um, and then lay my other, my, the other fabric right sides together and it would stitch the outline and then I would just cut them out and flip them right side out. All right. The question is, how did I create the background for the princess? So once again, I used uh, Encore. And that one, I did not use Word Sculpt. I used uh, Quilt Block Wizard. So let me show you. So I came down here. I clicked on Quilt Block Wizard. And in this one, I used Outline Quilt Block Filled Inner Shape. And so this is exactly what I did. I created a shape. And I next. So in the pull down, I have my shape. So the first thing that it does here is it's deciding my background. And then here, it's going to create the shape. So the first one was my hoop, and now is the shape. And I came down here, and I chose a heart. And here's somewhere. There we go. So I chose a heart. I click next, and it just created this little um, outline. Okay. And then when I was done here, well, that I made it a little big. I'm going to go to modify, and I just want to select just the heart. So again, Quilt Block Wizard is another video, so I'm not spending a whole lot of time on this. And I'm going to cut this, go home, and this one I can delete. And I'm left with just the heart. And then I just went on to Encore and created the shapes. So that's how I did these little guys. So I created the heart with my quilt block wizard, and then I used Encore just to create the shapes. Okay, does that answer that question? All right, so let me cancel and delete. All right, so the last way that I like to use um, Word Sculpt is to create cheater applique. And so, Again, when you're doing applique, digitizing will create great applique, but it does the three stops all in one color, which can be changed on most of your sewing machines or your embroidery machines. But I like to do everything in the software. So rather than going through Stitch Editor and trying to find that little point or going into the color things, I just do this because it's just, to me, it's just as easy. All right. So if I come over here to Word Sculpt, the Word Sculpt Wizard, and again on the Platinum, I can create my own shapes or I can edit the the shapes that are here. Um, and with Gold, I can use the shapes that are built in. So let's say I wanted to do a heart. Let me find it. Sorry. Do, 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 do. There's a lot of shapes in here, too. They're pretty cool. All right. I went too far. So everybody else stop when you see the hearts. There's people. There's there they are. So I'm going to come in. I'm going to create this little heart. And I want this size to be, let's say, I want to do uh, three inches. So if I type in three inches, remember, it's going to automatically resize it. It's going to automatically convert it to millimeters, All right? 
So on this one, I want it just to do a running stitch because this is just going to be a placement line. So I will go ahead and click next. I want no letters. So I click finish. And I'm going to go ahead and leave the color at blue. Then I'm going to come up here and I'm going to touch word sculpt again. It's going to default back on that same heart. And I'm going to change the size again to three inches. And it's going to make the same size. Now, in this one, I want it to do that cutting line. So I'm going to use a motif and click on options. And I'm going to just choose a Who's Born to Viking or FOP, the utility stitches. They have this nice little, uh, this is the knit zigzag. It works really great for creating um, a nice little cut line. So you see how it makes that nice little cut line. So I'll click next. Now with this one, again, no letters, finish. Now with this one, I'm going to change the color. So I'm going to change the color to green. Okay. And then the last time I'm going to come in and I'm going to change it to three inches. And this one, I'm just going to do a motif. And I will just leave it at the satin stitch. I'll click next. Again, no letters and finish. And this one I want to be red because it's a nice little heart. All right. So now I have the placement line, I have the cut line, and I have the decorative line. So if I go ahead home, I'm going to select all and I'm going to combine. I have my three breakdowns here. So now I can say, let's say I want to put a whole bunch of these here. I'm stitching a project and I want a whole bunch, or I'm making a project that I want to cut these out and piece them together. So now I have each one has its own set of colors, but I can come up here and combine all. And then I can also color sort. So do you see here, it's going to stitch out all of the placement lines all at once. It's going to stitch out all of the cut lines all at once. And then it's going to stitch out all of the decorative all at once. So do I have another ooh, ah, wow? Because this one is one of those, I do applique in digitizing and I do applique this way. Um, I do it this way when I want all three colors. And I do it in digitizing when I don't really care about having all three colors. All right. So are there any questions about this? All right. Have you done the applique technique with any of the built-in fonts, not just the word sculpt font? Again, uh, the built-in fonts, we're getting into a different category, but I am finished a little early, so I will go ahead and talk about that. I'm going to go ahead and just delete the my hearts. But if you come to the letter, there are a whole bunch of letters that are applique, and we can change our... I'm going to go ahead and just do that. We can change... Our, um, our applique, or our, excuse me, our lettering somewhat. I'm just going to change that to the largest size and I'm going to tell it okay. And then I'm going to zoom in so you guys can see. So, super designs and fonts, we can come in and play with them. So, if I come in and right click, this is a satin column font. I can choose from any of the two over 250 fills that come with it, but it's not going to allow me to re-digitize it to create and turn it into an applique. Right? So you do have quite a bit of versatility with, with your built-in fonts just by playing with the right click. <laughs> 
I will get plain, so you got to be careful with me. Um, but whenever you see the green handles, these are editable. Um, so you do have some uh, ability to edit. It is not a full-blown create, but I can come in. There's a whole bunch of font, uh, lettering in here in your shapes to choose from. So you can turn any of these into the applique. We've got uh, a thin and then we have the bold, but I can turn any of these into the same thing. If I come in here and I'm going to just change this to 100 and do my running stitch. And then I will come, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of you. And I can come and I'm just going to do 100. And I will do my triple stitch for my oh, motif. That's what I'm looking for. Sorry. Going on the wrong page. And I color it OK. And again, no letters. Change the color. And when I'm um, working with the three colors, I can clean up the colors later. All I want is three, you know, bold colors that I could differentiate. So I will change them into the actual colors later. So once I've got it going, how about All right, so then I can go ahead and just combine them. And now I have an applique. All right, so. All right, so the applique, there are applique lettering um, and you with digitizing, you can do anything with anything. Um, and then of course we have built in fonts with the word sculpt wizard um i'm trying to think well there's lots of ways we'll have to do a lettering and super design at facebook live because there is a lot that you can do just playing with that right click and for those of you that have the software and are a little bit nervous about it that is my big recommendation go in type a, a word any word and just start playing with right click and go down the list. What does this do? What does this do? What does this do? And it's the same with the super designs. Bring in a super design, any of them, right click and just play the what does it do? Go down the list. Because what you're doing is you're getting comfortable with the software. You're learning about the software. And the right click is something that you use with all facets of the software. So you're creating some muscle memory. So you're actually teaching yourself without realizing you're teaching yourself. And you're just having a good time. So I'm a big fan of uh, just bring in a letter, bring in a super design, and just start playing. Okay. All right. So um, we are ending a little bit early. So if there are any other questions um, that I can try and answer. Um, so we've answered the princess. We've answered the quilt as you go. We've answered the fault fonts. Is there anything else? I know we have another Facebook Live coming up with Karen Charles, and I'm I'm looking here because that's where your questions are coming in, and that is um, where the announcement is going to come in. So there's a question that says, "Can you save?" So yes, if I were to come into um, the word sculpt, and I'm going to create a new. I'm just going to create a circle rather than um, going all in, all around, just so I can show you how to save it. So if I come into the draw, I'm just going to quickly create a circle. So look how pretty I am. All right. If I come up here, I can save it. So this is my save button up here. And I can save it. I will save it into the MySonet. And I usually have a folder in my designs. So there's my plague mask. 
but I will save this as a funky circle. A circle. And it will save it as an ECQ file. Okay. And now if I click out and I cancel, I can come back to Word Sculpt and I can load or open a shape and I will go to my Sonet, my designs, and it will be wherever I saved it. And I can just load it from there. So yes, if you create a shape and you save it, so a new shape and save it, once you've saved it, you will come here to open shape to open your saved shapes. Okay. So the my, next MySonet Facebook Live is Wednesday, December 13th at 3 p.m. Eastern, 2 p.m. Central with Karen Charles, who will be creating for the embellishment accessory. For those of you that don't know what the embellishment accessory is, it is like the ribbon embroidery, except it uses yarn, ribbon, pearls, beads, etc. So um, those should be shipping already. So for those of you that have been waiting for it, um, just know that the shipments are starting to move. So uh, you should be seeing something soon. Okay. And any other questions before we go? All right, then. Well, I want to thank everybody for coming. I really appreciate it. Thank you for the wows and the comments and the questions. Um, I really do appreciate the feedback. And I will see you either on the road or I will see you at the next Facebook Live. And I will talk to you all soon. Thanks. Bye.